Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be going over the Unified Dream Machine firmware version 1.9.0, which was released one day ago. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we do have an Amazon storefront and I'll put the link in the description below. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to upgrade the firmware on my UDM Pro, and then we're going to go over some of the improvement with the Dream Machine firmware version 1.9.0. And we're also going to look at the new Unify Network Controller update 6.1.61. So to upgrade your UDM Pro to the latest firmware version, we're gonna go down to settings. And this is only if you have automatic firmware disabled, which I do. And then we're gonna to go to firmware and then we're gonna to go to update. And it says that there's an update available. Right now I'm on 1.86. Now it says update Dream Machine Pro firmware from 1.8.6 to version 1.9.0. And we're gonna confirm. While the UDM Pro updates, let's go over some of the newly added features. I'll leave a link in the description also to this release, but some of the improvements are it adds LLDP support in the UDM Pro. It adds MAC address cloning. It's gonna add a notification about exhausted DHCP pools and suggest to enable auto scaling, which would increase the size of your subnet. It's gonna add support for the Wi-Fi man speed test. It's gonna update the UI for the OS settings in local portal. It's gonna add a setup type step in the setup. It's gonna add cloud backup support, Unify network only in this version, which is in beta UDM Pro only. It's gonna improve firmware update stability. It's gonna improve firmware update reliability. It's also gonna improve IPsec stability. And I hope this is true because I've been working with a few clients and they have a site to site IPsec tunnel and it is not stable at all. They're gonna improve compatibility with the UC DAC-SFP plus and they're updating Sericata to 5.0.5 and that's for our threat management. They're gonna update fingerprint signatures as well as DNS masks to version 2.84. It's gonna update WAN2 geo information separate from our WAN1 and they're gonna have remote connection stability improvements. In threat management, they're gonna provide IP reputation whitelisting feature. It's gonna consolidate the Wi-Fi SSID creation during the setup. It's gonna reduce Wi-Fi airtime for large deployments by increasing ARP timeouts. And we could implement a graceful IPsec slash L2TP shutdown. We could enhance SSH password format check and they're gonna shorten DNS mass conflict checking timeout to one second. And we'll also be able to display multiple WAN IP addresses in settings. And they also include some improvements and bug fixes for the LCM. Underneath the bug fixes, we have quite a long list. I'm not gonna go through that. There are a few CVEs that it addresses in patches. Now that we've seen what's included with the Unified Dream Machine firmware 1.9, Dot zero, let's take a look at what's included in the new Unify controller 6.1.61. So this controller version, there's not as long as a list, but some of the improvements, they add new look and feel for all pages, and we'll be taking a look at that. They add new alerts and alert settings, add integration with Wi-Fi Man app, update push notifications and email templates, and they add WPA3 support. WPA3 support models are listed be below. We have our UAP AC Pro, AC Lite, AC LR, AC EDU, and a bunch of other access points, including our new U6 Lite and U6 LR. Now let's go over to our controller and take a look. So I refreshed the web browser to the controller and now we can see that Unify UID is popping up. So new Unify service. User management is core part to any directory service and is a basic security essential for any organization. User management enables admins to control user access and onboard and offboard users and within the Unify platform that you're familiar with. You click on this button to learn more about the UID. I'm just gonna say, don't show this message again, and then press X. 
All right, here we could see that it looks a lot different. We have our network, which is 6.1.61, uh, and then we have access, which I'll have to update a little later, and then we have UID, which we could set up. I'm not gonna go over that right now as I don't really know much about it. So let's go ahead and look at our new network controller. And here's the dashboard for the new Unify controller 6.1.61. We could see on the left-hand side here, it says UDM Pro, and then it shows the version. It says WAN IP, which is on port nine. And right here, it's just a private IP address. And it will also show us our gateway. It's showing us utilization for the past 24 hours, as well as system uptime, which it hasn't been up that long since we've done the firmware upgrade. It shows us our most active clients and we could view all. And it also shows us our most active apps. Like always, we could see our download and our upload and we could run a speed test. On the right hand side, we could see our client device type and then below we could see the active clients, which we have 33 active now and there's a total of 64. On the left hand side, it looks a little bit different. We still have the little disk access point in the top left hand corner and then below we have our dashboard. Below the dashboard, we have our topology and our topology looks different. We can see in the right hand corner that they have a legend for our wired connections and our wireless. So our wired connections will be the solid blue line. Wireless will be the broken line and we have our different wireless bands. So the 2.4 and the five gigahertz. If we scroll in, we could see all of these are hardwired and then we could see that the rest of these clients are wireless. We could also just click on each of the devices that we have in our network to expand more. So if we click on my UDM Pro, we're gonna see the uplink to the USW aggregation. If we click on that, we're gonna see the uplink to our other switches. And then once we click on the switches, we're gonna see all of our clients. We could take a look at the display options for our topology and we could show all clients or we could pick and choose if we only wanna see the 2.4 gigahertz or the five gigahertz. We could also choose what we wanna see under the wireless. So if we wanna see the SSID, the Wi-Fi experience, the channel and the Wi-Fi standards. Under the wired, they only have two different options for speed and port in, port out. Right now they're not enabled, but let's enable them and see what it looks like. So once we turn that on, you could see which port it's connected to. So this Unify Inwall HD is connected to port seven on my 24 port switch, and it's going at one gigabit speed. Then if we go over to floor plan, it says coming soon. So floor plan functionality is still available on legacy versions on the legacy version of the map page. Click go to settings and revert to the old map page, or you could try it out on the Unified Design Center. We're not gonna take a look at that in this video. Then if we click on our devices, we're gonna see all of our connected Unified gear. So we have a UAP in-wall HD, and then we have a U6LR. And we can see this little Wi-Fi symbol with the number six in it. If I click on the four boxes in the right hand side, it's gonna show a bigger picture of what the access points look like. And we could see the Wi-Fi experience and we could see the throughput to the access points or the switches. Now clicking on the devices shows it a little differently as well. So let's go ahead and click on my U6 LR. On the top, we could see our Wi-Fi experience, which is at 100% right now. And it's gonna show us data from 24 hours ago, 12 hours ago, and the current time. It's gonna show us all our normal stuff like the MAC address model and the firmware version. And if we keep scrolling down, these lists look a little bit different. So we have our uplink, radios, downlinks, AP group, clients, guest, and we have history as well as WLAN. If we click on the middle device button, this is where we're gonna specify the name for it. We could do the LED settings. We could change the network to DHCP or static. Same with the services as well as manage. Under radio, we could change the channel width, the channel that we're using, and the transmit power. They also have the band steering, the channel usage, and the RF environment under the radio tab. And we could see here that the scan graphs also look a little bit different. Now let's take a look at how the switches look. So I clicked on my Unify switch aggregation, and if we click on one of the ports, they don't have an edit pencil anymore. We just need to click on the port we want. Here it's the same thing, we could give it a name as well as the port profile. And then we could add it to a Mac ID filter allow list. We could go down to the port profile overrides. 
And here we have our port operation, so we could do the switching, mirroring, or aggregate. And then we have our link speeds. Not a lot of things have changed in the switching, it just looks a little bit different. Now let's take a look at the UDM Pro. So the UDM Pro, it looks pretty much the same. We have our WAN, we have our downlinks, we have our clients and guests, we have our network and statistics. If we click on the device, there's this new setting that says screen. Maybe this was in old versions and I missed it, but if we click on screen, we could change the screen brightness for our UDM and we could also set night mode. So what this does, it turns the screen off during these hours. So we have our begin and we have our end. And we could also synchronize the screen. So if we have all Gen 2 equipment, we could synchronize it to use this night mode feature. Now let's take a look at the client list. So this is what the new client list looks like and I don't really like it, but some people may. We could do some filters, could turn on the toggle switch for blocked or offline clients. Under connections, we could select if we want to see our VPN connections, our wired connections, our wireless connections, our users or our guests, and which coverage type they're using, either the 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz. And then we could choose our clients based on which device they're connecting to. So if we only selected our USW Pro 24, it will only show us the clients connected to that. And right now I have eight clients and that's all it's showing. So here we have our Wi-Fi scanner, which will be able to see all the different SSIDs that are broadcasting around us. So you'll be able to see your neighbors or other businesses around you. And another cool feature is the Wi-Fi Man. So you need to download the Wi-Fi Man app either on your Android or your iPhone. And once you run a speed test through it, it's gonna show you the results. So we could see here that the client was an Apple iPhone. The name is Cody's iPhone. The Wi-Fi experience was 99%. It was on the access point UALR6 version 2. So that's my UniFi 6 long range. It will show you the SSID, the signal strength, and the channel. And we could see here that my phone was getting 564 megabits per second download and 684 upload. The rate was 1.08 gigabits per second by 1.2 gigabits per second and it shows you a date timestamp. Now let's take a look at our threat management. So not a whole lot has changed on the threat management. We could still block out countries. We could look at our traffic log, our endpoint scans, and our honeypot. If we scroll down, we could see our total threats by the severity, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't look like it changed too much. Now let's go into the settings. Here we could create a new Wi-Fi network, and let's go ahead and do that so that we could select the WPA3. So I'm gonna add a new Wi-Fi network. The network is gonna be enabled. I'll just call it testing. And then we're gonna add a password. So it'll be test one, two, three, four. The network that it's gonna be associated with, I'll just have it as LAN. And then if we look under advanced settings, we could do our Wi-Fi bands, which I'll have it set to both. And then we could have our broadcasting APs. What we really wanna see is if WPA3 really is in here. So we'll click under security. And now we could see that there's WPA2 slash WPA3, WPA3, and then WPA3 Enterprise. So that's a great new security feature that Unify has introduced in this controller. We could create a new network and nothing has changed in these settings. We could go under security, which nothing also has changed. And one of the biggest updates I think within this new Unify controller comes under the internet tab. So if we look here, we have our two WAN. So I'm gonna go under WAN2. There's nothing connected to that right now, but I'm just gonna show you guys the settings. So I'll click on the three dots and then go edit. Here we could give our WAN2 a name and then we could choose the primary and secondary DNS. We could also put a VLAN ID if it's required by our ISP. We could also now do MAC address cloning. So some ISPs, we need to put the MAC address of the modem in. So we could hit this toggle switch and then set the MAC address. We could also enable smart queues and do load balancing. The only load balancing right now is failover. But the biggest update in my opinion, if it actually works, is under our IPv4 or IPv6 connections. So if we click on the IPv4, we could see that it's DHCP right now. But if we choose static, here we could put in our IPv4 address and subnet mask, and we could also put in the router. But then under that, we could add additional IPs. So if we bought a block of IPs, we could add them here. 
So we could either add it one IP at a time or we could add an IP range, a start and stop. So this will allow us or should allow us to have multiple WAN IPs, which has been requested for years in the Unify routing line. There really isn't more to go over in this controller version. I'm sure I missed a couple things here and there. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave it below. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, 